And Sarah, what's the district attorney? I mean, you worked under, you worked alongside her. What is she doing uh, as all of this? It seems controlled chaos, I guess, is the phrase we would use right now. I mean, what is, is she just going about business as usual? What does that look like for her? I imagine she's in her office. I know she's got a separate, complete unit wing there at the DA's office that's, that's aside from the normal other uh, prosecutors in that office. So I imagine she's there with her team, monitoring what's going on, probably speaking with Sheriff Labatt um, to make sure that everybody is turned in and that there are no issues. I imagine the clerk, um, it's a new clerk actually, um, Shay Alexander is probably a part of that to make sure the paperwork goes through and bonding. Um, he will have a booking ID number to Tonight, so making sure all those things are connected in the clerk's office, dealing with logistics. And there you can see the motorcade entering the grounds. Of course, we are waiting for him to actually work. And I should note, you know, as we're covering this, and it, it is remarkable to watch this motorcade, to watch his plane land, to watch him turn, make his way here. I mean, Trump himself has been not downplaying this. I mean, he has certainly seen how he uses these exact moments to his political advantage, Sarah. I mean, you, you covered him when he was in the White House as well. And, and he was posting today, you know, what time he expected to be here, 7.30 here. It is 7.34 as he is arriving here. Um, where they're pulling we love a timely, we love some timely guidance, I guess. Yeah, but he does use these. I mean, he uses these for fundraising. He uses these to rally his base. I mean, that's one of the questions about the sort of value of a mugshot in this case, right? It's sure it's treating Donald Trump if he does get one the same as any other defendant, but you're also giving him a photo that there's no doubt that he's going to use on promotional material, he's going to use on fundraising material. I, I believe he made a fake mugshot in the past yeah. <laughs> that he used for fundraising purposes. And I think that, you know, that's one of the things that's gone into consideration in, in his previous three arrests where he has not had a mugshot is, do we really need to do this when we're talking about a former president of the United States? We know what he looks like. And it's, he is certainly the highest profile person this week that has come in here, but it, it's not just Trump who has gone through this exact process a bit, without a motorcade, without a private plane bringing them in. I mean, Mark Meadows came in just earlier and had his mugshot yesterday, or today we saw Rudy Giuliani coming in yesterday, getting his mugshot as well. I mean, the parade of people and former top officials in, in the U.S. government that have come through this Fulton County jail in the last few days is remarkable in and of itself. Oh, absolutely. It's unprecedented. It's nothing like I think any jail has ever seen. And certainly I know Atlanta and the Rice Street has never seen. And I know a lot of work, um, effort has gone into making sure it goes through without a hitch. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens inside that jail because, again, it is the Fulton County jail. And, uh, you know this jail well, but for, for people at home who aren't watching who haven't been to Atlanta, I mean, can you just remind them, the Justice Department has opened investigations into this jail because of the humanitarian conditions. They've called it a humanitarian crisis, the sheriff had. I mean, can you just speak to yes. what regular people who go into this jail experience? Yes. I mean, it is overcrowded. There are not enough beds for inmates. And so um, at the height of COVID and recently, people were sleeping on the floor. Um, they didn't have enough masks at one point. Um, there was a notorious for the locks at different cells not locking, which obviously poses a security risk for inmates. There is a serious gang issue in that jail. Um, and the higher up you go, it's seven floors. And the higher up you go, the more serious the charges are. So people charged with murder and the most serious crimes are on the seventh floor and down on the first floor you've got mental health um, or, or special high profile um, people like a Donald Trump. If he were housed there, he'd probably be on the first floor. Mm -hmm. I do want to point out, though, that this was a choice to have Donald Trump and these, and these other 18 co-defendants show up and be processed at the jail. This does not have to happen. It commonly does for most defendants in this case, but there are other ways that defendants can be arrested, can be criminally processed. And this was a choice that the sheriff made, that he wanted all of these defendants, you know, in consultation with the district attorney to go through this process close to what a normal criminal defendant would. So what, what would the other options have been? So my understanding, one, is that there's an option that is at the Fulton County Courthouse that is very uncommonly used, but is a possibility. But two, that they could have potentially made other arrangements in other places to do this. In my conversations leading up to it, it sort of seemed like the jail was the top of their list. The DA and the sheriff really wanted to, to send this message that they were going to try to treat these defendants as close to any other criminal defendant. And again, obviously, a normal criminal defendant does not get the light and sirens treatment from the airport and it's not going to be in and out and 
you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, but it still was a, a choice for the sheriff to have them all come here. And I should note that he is, we are told, being placed under arrest in Fulton County right now. He is surrendering to state law enforcement, and now he is going to undergo the booking process. And you were mentioning, did you, did you call it the Sally Port? What did you call it? Yes, the Sally Port. And that's where he's at. That's where you're taken. So where we're so sitting. That's where he's just entered just now, entering the jail. Correct. That's the Sally Port. He'll go through there. There is a private sort of area, a glass area that's enclosed. Typically, they'll do a strip search. So if you're arrested off, off of the street, they will unclothe you and do a cavity search to make sure you're not smuggling in contraband. And then you'll be taken inside where the intake booking in process happens with all of those different sort of sections um, in the intake booking area. And is that the entrance that typically a defendant would go through or? It is. That is the area that um, a defendant would go through with the exception of if a, if a person knows they have a, an active warrant off of the street, sometimes their attorney will just arrange to walk them in the front door of the jail and say, hi, my client's surrendering, and you'll do that through the front door. Um, but if you're arrested on the street and you're taken in a, in a police vehicle, you're going to be taken to the back sally port. And can we, was, we heard talking, Van was saying earlier how, you know, talking about two-tiered system of justice and how some people are treated and how Trump is treated. I mean, typically they would not clear the streets of Atlanta to have his motorcade, to have a defendant's motorcade come through. I mean, this does look unusual than what you would typically see for a defendant. You're right. I mean, the streets would not be closed. I will say that when they do transport inmates from the jail to the Fulton County Courthouse, which is about, you know, a seven-minute ride, that happens a few times a day, and they do have an escort, obviously, for safety purposes with the sheriff's office and the, the buses that go that way um, to make sure there are no issues. You know, Fulton County is the home of one of the most dangerous um, shootings at the courthouse in 2005 with Brian Nichols, and so security has been elevated here since then more probably than anywhere else um, in a county courthouse in our state. Um, so security is number one here in Fulton County because of that. And, and Trump has officially gone into the jail. We were told that his aides that are with him are sitting in the vehicles that you can see. Obviously, the, the Secret Service goes in with him. They did that in Washington. He had just a remarkable security scene-wise because it was Secret Service. But one person who is sitting in those cars right there that the people at home will now know is, is Walt Nana, his co-defendant <laughs> in the documents case, just to speak to the bizarre level of, of what we're watching. Yeah, it does sort of, you know, you were talking about Susie Wiles earlier, and it sort of makes you wonder to the, you know, back to the beginning when Susie Wiles started working for Trump and some of these aides started working for Trump, how different it is, how different this experience of working for, you know, again, the front runner for the Republican nomination for president is from what they anticipated, organizing lawyers, sitting in a motorcade outside of a jail while you're, you know, the person you're working for is preparing to be arrested or is under arrest for the fourth time. I mean, it's just an incredible thing to see. Yeah, Jake, I mean, you've covered a lot of campaigns, covered the White House. Safe to say that is not typically what senior advisors on campaigns are tasked with doing, making sure that you have the right attorneys for your indictments.